The Northtown News Magazine is brought to you in part by eVoter. eVoter is proud to be a sponsor of the Northtown News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, the famous Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Greater Chicago Jewish Festival. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon light city, sweet home Chicago. Hey there, I am really Marty Levinson. Don't let anybody fool you. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Avi Myers here, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine. Thanks to my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch. Welcome to the 30th anniversary, I guess the 15th, Greater Chicago Jewish Festival. And the chief cook and bottle washer, the person who's been there since the beginning, the person making things happen around here, and with the help of probably a few hundred people, if not more, is Michael Lorge. Michael, a pleasure and an honor. Great, great <laughs> to have you guys here yet again. It's always good to uh, have you with us and to really make a good uh, archival record and an interesting, entertaining record of the festival. Well, it's a pleasure, and I tell you, as the years go, people still watch the old shows on the web. Well, the music is uh, really the heart and soul, not only of the festival, but of the Jewish community. So who gets tired of hearing this music? No, nobody gets tired of hearing the music, and I uh, no, it's good stuff, that's for sure. And um, how many, about how many people are involved? Any idea? Well, we have about 230 people who are volunteers on top of the steering committee of about 60, 70. That's pretty heavy. Yeah. <laughs> the hardest part is uh, getting everyone to go to the right place at the right time, but that makes it all work. Now, and despite the rain delay, you know, the, the sky's starting to get sunny again, and people are coming out, and you've got a rotating crew throughout. I mean, not, some years I know you've got like 40,000 people. Yeah, we're, uh, we're not quite sure, but the gate was real strong this morning. It was a great turnout early. And what's amazing is how many people stayed even through the little bit of rain we got. And we opened up the tented stage, the cabaret stage, and we have a big sing-along going there. The tent is, is just packed with people having a good time. No, I think it's been terrific, and there's been a lot of great groups. As a matter of fact, uh, Sonny's daughter, Jamie, was out getting a bunch of the groups. Good, good. So uh, we, got some, we got a little bit ourselves. matter of fact, there was a young kid early on on the stage um, where Melissa Foreman was doing the announcing. Um, really, uh, the kid's really talented. I don't think he was more than 14 or 15 years old. Uh, that was probably the group from one of the high schools. They had, yeah, a, yeah. They had a wonderful, wonderful ensemble they put together, and they came through our Chicago, Jewish Chicago's Got Talent program. <laughs> we did an open audition, and uh, it brought some great people in. We did it at the Skokie Theater, and we were happy to have their friendship and working with us. That sounds great, and uh, I haven't checked with Jamie who she got, but among the instructions were to get Carl Sassano, of course, as the house band. Of course, our good, uh, our good long-standing band that uh, includes my wife. Right, and uh, I want to say hi to Mike Heimlich also, who we never quite get on the air, but who, who does a tremendous amount of work also. Right, right. He's been with us from the beginning with his wife, Denise. There still are uh, probably a good 20 people who were involved in the first festival and still working on this one. I think that's great. I did miss the first one, but I was there at the second one. <laughs> okay, the first one was the only one that we went indoors for. And what we learned from that is that we're better off staying outdoors and enduring a little bit of rain like this than trying to go indoors. It changes the whole feel of the event. Where were you at? Uh, that first one, we were supposed to be in a park along the lakeshore in Evanston. Yeah. And at the last minute, we got scared and went indoors to the JCC, the old Horwich JCC. And they were wonderful to us, but we were overwhelmed to the degree that the police closed down the traffic both on McCormick and on Tui and we became absolutely frantic that the entire project was a disaster but the uh, JCC people and others gathered around and said no 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 you've hit a nerve you got something special just keep going with it and with that encouragement here we are 30 years later I know traffic was interesting today too because I kept hearing well, Jan Schakowsky's going to be here next amount of time, stuck in traffic. Well, Joel Pollock's going to be here next amount of time, stuck in traffic. But you know what? Two years ago was interesting. You were over. This place was overwhelmingly Republican. Right. And and, and this time you you kind of evened up. 
I mean, you had uh, the first time I've ever gotten Dan Seals, and I've been trying for three elections. <laughs> well, look, the organizational area of the festival is interestingly a high point. People actually really love to come along and see all the different Jewish organizations and other organizations that want to be part of the festival. It's open to everyone, so it's nice to see that all parties find their way here. And the interesting thing is, too, and I, by the way, I do look at placement, because you've got organizations that ordinarily might want to be tooth and nail against each other. So I don't usually see them quite next to each other in booths, but everybody is so nice and friendly here. And you've got from the far left to the far right, from the most religious to the weirdest religious, and uh, and I mean weird sometimes. Yeah, we even have a group here this this year that came from Atlanta called Punk Torah. I and was going to say, yeah, you know what? I was yes. It took us a while to check them out. We try to check everyone out and make sure that uh, they're here to share in the real mission. The real mission. Let me just jump in because you hit your you really hit the chord. It's been 30 years. We've grown the stages, we've changed some of the layout, we've done all kinds of things, but the mission's the same. It's celebrating Jewish identity both within and sharing it with the general community, really celebrating what's great with Jewish music, Jewish art, and all kinds of other aspects, including food. The other part of the mission is tolerance. Everyone comes this day to know that they all have to get along. Doesn't make any difference what we're gonna say to each other tomorrow, today we get along. Yeah. And by the way, I want to give you credit, too, because every single food person is kosher, of course. properly kosher. I mean, right. no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Right. We uh, want to make sure everyone's comfortable and part of it, and uh, that everyone understands that, again, we're, we're here for, as, as Kol Yisrael, one community. Yeah, and I'll tell you, it's really cool. And, um, I, I, I uh, really wish I could have gotten more organizations. There's just so many interesting people and interesting organizations that, uh, and every year there's something new, and well, actually every other year, because you guys don't quite do this every year. Right, we need a year to recover. The other thing you'd find interesting would be to stop the uh, steering committee members who are in orange shirts, find out how long they've been doing it and what their real career is. And you've got such an eclectic background that you understand why the festival works. Yeah, actually, I want to tell you, and, I, and I'm afraid to leave people out, so I'm not going to start naming names, but they came up to me and said, hi, Avi. <laughs> and, and in some cases, I knew exactly who they were, some people were very surprised they even knew what their parents' business was because I knew them that long. And, um, you know, there, there was an awful lot of familiar... I used to come here and it's like I, you know, might be slightly suspect. Now everybody knows me from the steering committee, which is not everybody, but it's, it's really great. One of the things I want to say, too, that I want to urge people in the future, and I only got there like two or three days ago, but the website has gotten so much better. This year in particular, I mean, you could really look to see what was at all the stages well in advance so we were able to plot a game plan for what groups we wanted, look at all the organizations, and I was able to look them up on the web to see, you know, like what they were about. But even there is an example. That website, as much as design that went into it, was done all volunteer by a member of our steering committee, and a number of them worked to keep it updated. And that's, again, the core and spirit of the festival is no one's making money. We're just out here doing something to throw a nice big party for the Jewish community. And it's really nice and um, you know you know what I, I just you know I know you can't do it more often but I this is something I really look forward to. I block off this time far in advance and actually what you know even a lot of my neighbors you know have, have gotten involved and volunteered over the years which right. I think is very cool and, and actually if, if that ever in the future not that you need help with attendance want to come on like a couple of months Happy before. To. That'd be great, and, and we could plug it. And by the way, we want to give you, um, congratulate you also because you are now a trustee of the village of Skokie. That's right. <laughs> it's a good honor and a fascinating thing to be involved with all the good government and working with Mayor Van Dusen, as you know, is a wonderful He was here today, good guy. Right, you know? right. And uh, now you've also joined the core of those people who said hi, I'm Marty Levinson. That's right. <laughs> That's a great honor, too. The biggest honor is having you here. Well, first of all, it's, it's our honor all the way. And uh, we want to thank you very much. We want all of you to look forward. We're going to probably have about three shows here. We might even have a special or two at the music. Um, it's going to be, it, once it's up on YouTube, you know, you can go back past years and catch some of the old festivals also. Right. And we know 
we're just going to try to reflect what's here as best as we can and just enjoy because you're going to really enjoy the next three weeks of shows. Thanks. Michael, thank you so much. Be well. Okay. Bye. Avi Meyer is Northtown and Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. This is our very first interview right now at the Greater Chicago Jewish Fest, and we are here with... Larry Sufferton, the Cook County Commissioner for this area. And... State Representative Lou Lang. Okay, and I know that uh, Larry, as the Commissioner, you've got a lot to do with uh, getting the permits, getting things set up here. Right, we're in the Forest Preserve, which is part of uh, our Cook County Forest Preserve responsibilities, and, uh, you know, this is the third year we've done it here at St. Paul Woods, and... The weather seems to be cooperating and uh, just walking around looking at uh, the drainage and other issues we've had in the past, they don't seem to be here. So I hope a lot of people will come out today, uh, even though it's a little overcast, but it, it's just beautiful. You can hear the music and the vitality of the people here. Yeah, and I, and I the Tribune did say in the weather this morning that they think the rain will hold off till later in the day. Yeah, when the Cubs play, I think. And since I'm a Cubs fan and lose a Sox fan, I think I want the rain tonight the way things are going. <laughs> Well, at least you get to see the Stanley Cup. Right, right. right. <laughs> uh, this is your home turf, isn't it? Uh, uh, it is, and uh, it's great to have the festival here. Uh, I think it's not going to be too blistering hot, so I think people will show up, and uh, people will be excited as they always are. It's always a great event. I noticed Michael Lorge over there, who is one of the Skokie trustees and a good friend of Lou's and mine, who is one of the real uh, movers and shakers here in his cart. I hope uh, looks like he's holding a little baby over there, so that's probably a grandchild. It, Lou, it, I think they, it yeah, probably right, is. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I hate to, yeah, I, I, I started coming to this 28 years ago when I had an exhibit for Jewish Chicago, so wow. he's old enough to have a uh, grandchild, no question. Wow. Well, it looks like a wonderful event, and, and the artists that are out, the, the musicians that are out all seem to be just ready to meet people and the food is just r remarkable i just walked through there they the wonderful smells and the l and the coloring of all the food is so fantastic yeah. now this is quite a large booth you're representing all the democrats today we as the committeeman for niles township we have a booth for all the democrats so we're encircled here by all sorts of democratic signs for different elected officials is there anybody running in the whole state you don't have a sign for <laughs> no i think we've got them all here that's our job Okay, very good. Now, um, we're all through for the year with Springfield, or? <laughs> well, I hope the House is finished. Uh, the Senate may have to go back and uh, pass a couple of important bills, but we believe the House has finished our business. Who knows? Could get called back any time in this crazy world. Are you expecting any of the uh, major Democratic candidates to come by today? I'm pretty sure David Miller, our candidate for Comptroller, will be here, and there may be other surprises along the way. I, I think that Tony Preckwinkle and the governor both were going to try and make it. They have other events and their schedules they were going to try and shoehorn it in uh, to be able to come up here so hopefully they'll be here for a little while to see this great crowd yeah i talked to jan Schakowsky's people she's in theory supposed to be here uh hopefully and uh, i've never gotten dan seals although i've been inviting him three elections in a row and he's supposed to have a booth i hope he actually shows well uh, dan's here uh, as, uh, with this group he may have a separate table i don't know but uh, uh, you know, Lou is the committeeman, really, is the political leader for Niles Township, and we're in the heart of Niles Township right here. Very good. That we certainly are, and, um, you know, this is the very beginning stage, so people are just starting to file in, and it looks like it's going to be a great day. Have a wonderful time, Bobby. Well, thank you very much, Larry. Thank you, thank you very much, Enjoy State yourself. Representative Lang. Bye -bye. You too. Avi Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. We are at the Greater Chicago Jewish Fest. The rain's hauled off. It's kind of a cool day, which is nice. It's not still in the 70s, a little bit humid. Um, we are here with Yossi Bamel, and he is with the director of the Hebron Fund. Okay, and what is the Hebron Fund? The Hebron Fund is the American organization that supports the Jewish community in Hebron, the place where our forefathers are buried, the place where Judaism began, where, where the Jewish people began. You know, the word Abraham and Hebron and Hebrew, it's all the same word. It all began in Hebron. No, the attitude is not that I've been there. <laughs> Yeah, that's a story for another day. So how, how, it's a very volatile city, of course. What's the situation there? Well, the truth is that right now, it's, at the last five, six years, it's been very quiet. It's been very quiet. Uh, ever since uh, the Israeli army took back the hills surrounding Hebron, it's been very quiet, it's been, and it's been good for us. The truth is that even the Arab neighbors, uh, there was an article in Howard's newspaper last year about how it's the most economically successful town because the Israeli army, because the Israeli army is in control of the area, and uh, this way they can get, do business instead of terrorism, and it's really good for everybody. And uh, how large is the Jewish community in Hebron? The Jewish community in Hebron proper is only about 100 uh, 
Jewish families. Uh, we have nearby Kiryat Arba with, with another 7,000 Jews living. Uh, however, what's interesting is that in the area under Israeli control, the city is split up sort of uh, uh, half and half. And uh, in our part of town, when the Second Intifada began, the Arabs started shooting at the Jews. So the Jew Arabs who lived next to the Jews picked up and ran. So today, there are only about 10,000 Arabs left in the area under Israeli control and about 10,000 Jews in the same uh, urban area of Kiryat Arba and Hebron together. So uh, things are looking good. The ads are improving, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, and um, you're here to make friends for the Hebron Fund? Yes, actually, I, uh, I'm here in the States for about uh, two weeks, uh, and I flew in from New York this morning, uh, and I've been doing things in Chicago the last couple of years, and I really think that we need to connect up the Jewish people to where it all began, to Hebron, uh, Ira Kodesh. And one of the things I will say, by the way, uh, he's friendly with my brother Marshall, and those chairs back there are from my basement. <laughs> that is correct. Marshall's a good friend of ours, and I'm staying in his house as well. Listen, uh, a pleasure meeting you, Yossi. I want okay. to wish you much luck, Rabba. You too. Lots of luck. luck. In your endeavor. If people, do you have a website? Yes, our website. We have a couple of websites. If you want to send a prayer to the gates of Eden, uh, that's www.machpela.com, M-A-C-H-P-E-L-A. -E you can send a prayer. You can learn about the Martha Machpela, about Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. That's one of our websites. Our second website is hebron.com, H-E-B-R-O-N.com. That's news and uh, opinion from Hebron. And our third website is hebronfund.com, H-E-B-R-O-N-F-U-N-D. And that's more about the activities in the United States of the Hebron Fund for the Jewish community of Hebron. So those are our three websites. And check it out. Come visit us. If you can't do it for real, at least virtually. Are you ready to see this incredibly cool group? Yeah. Alright, these guys are all performers. They attend Deerfield High School. They perform. You're not the mom, are you? What are the, no, just a big fan. Groupies? We love groupies. Okay. Uh, they perform as part of the school's variety show. The band is comprised of members Nathan Bertig on guitar and vocals. We have Ron Silverglade on piano. Aaron Gundersheimer, and I'm, I'm Aaron Gundersheimer on bass, and Jesse Samler on drums. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you this afternoon, Tar K.
Bobby Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Greater Chicago Jewish Fest is not just a great place to check out various Jewish food and, and various opportunities, see all these different organizations, but for me, being a political junkie, it's one of the best places to find candidates. And so far today, the Republicans are far out this is in the Democrats. We've got the um, candidate for 10th District, um, which is northern suburbs, uh, who won the primary, Robert Dole. How are you? Good and to see you. you too, and this gold with the I've gold got a two missing. I'm trying to pronounce things properly and today's not my day. <laughs> so um, tell us what, what's the basis of, what, what, what how, how's the campaign going? The campaign's going very well. And first of all, we're delighted to be out here at the, the Greater Chicago Jewish Folk Festival. It's just it's great to see so many folks out here having a good time. Uh, for us the campaign uh, is largely about getting out to the four corners of the district and talking to people about the issues and concerns that they have. We, things are going well. People are very responsive to our message, and that's bringing small business common sense uh, thinking to Washington. We think that uh, you know Washington's heading in the wrong direction right now, and as a small business owner, we know that we've got to bring some common sense thinking to Washington. Matter of fact, one of the recent guests on our show, Elliot Richardson, who's on the other side, a good guy, saying nice things yeah. about you, and he's very much into the small business advocacy. Elliot, Elliot is running a small business advocacy group right now. We have an opportunity sit down with him and his organization to talk to them about small business issues and some of their concerns. And, and Elliot, I think, is doing a, a great service for the community in terms of trying to highlight some of these issues that small business is going to face. And, and if we look at it, two-thirds of all net new jobs in our country are created by small business. And so it seemed like common sense to me that we want to empower small business to create those jobs. No question about it. As long as we're at a Jewish rest, can we ask you about Israel? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I actually just got back from Israel two weeks ago. Wow. Which was uh, it was a fantastic trip. We spent uh, five days, focused a lot of time in Jerusalem, met with Israel's foreign ministry, uh, met with the vice prime minister, uh, Bogi Alon, had a, an hour and a half meeting with, uh, with him, talking about some of the strategic issues that Israel faces today. In fact, we were in the foreign ministry when beepers went off, uh, alerting them that the flotilla was going to be on the way. And so, oh, interesting. We had we had a fantastic trip. We went to the north and then went down to Starot. Um, and honestly, s standing in between Gaza City and Starot, just getting a better perspective of the geographics was fascinating. And uh, it's just not fair what they're going through each and every day in Starot, you know, having to deal with the, you know the constant barrage of missiles. About every 100 yards, there's a, a missile shelter. Wow. And so when the alarms go off, they've got anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds to, to make a decision as to which shelter they're going to go to. Uh, and that's, you have a very different perspective about why Israel needs to be able to protect herself and why they need to make sure that the flotilla uh, wasn't able to get through uh, the way it was. Five of the six ships were able to go right to, uh, uh, to Israel and be able to be checked out. That humanitarian aid went into Gaza and was turned away by Hamas. So I, I think that they knew right then and there even beforehand that it was going to be a public relations disaster. Yeah, they, um, these guys, one thing they, they, the only thing that, you know, Israel does get outsmarted in the PR department quite a bit sometimes, <laughs> and it's a problem, but they knew exactly what they were doing, there's no question about it, and uh, they were ready, they were ready for them. But they were ready for them, and I think the interesting thing and the thing to note is that Israel will not do anything to jeopardize her security, and nor should they. Uh, as, a so as a sovereign nation, as a sovereign nation, they, they have to have the ability to protect their borders, and that's what we, we were finding with the flotilla. And um, uh, you know, I think they uh, they're losing the public relations war. But I think, uh, having been there, we have to recognize they need to have the ability to protect themselves, and that's what they did. Well, it sounds good, and we want to. This is Robert Dole, who's running for Congress, 10th District, Republican. If people want to contact your campaign. If they want to contact that campaign, we'd love to love to have you out to volunteer. You go to doledforcongress.com. That's D-O-L-D for congress.com. Or they can always call uh, call the office at 847-251-DOLD. 847-251-DOLD. Thank you so much. We look Thank forward you. to talking to you more as the campaign progresses. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Avi Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sunny and
Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the World Wide Web at www.ntnm.org, where an ungodly amount of people have actually watched the show. I don't understand what you people are doing. We are at the Greater Chicago Jewish Fest 30th anniversary. Um, cool day, a little bit overcast, but weather's holding up. There's no rain, and I guess the third time's the charm. We are privileged and pleased to have the Democratic candidate for Congress in the 10th District, Dan Seals. How are you? I'm doing well. It's a great day for the festival, huh? Yes, it is. Thank you. And, um, you know, it's so, I, I get so frustrated sometimes, but you know what? I, I'm so glad you're, why don't you tell us, you know, why people should be voting for you? Well, I think that the, the number one reason uh, is if they want to see a, a competent, uh, common sense uh, platform for turning our economy around. Um, my whole motivation for this is having a, a better life for my kids and the next generation. And if we're going to do that, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, I think that's turning the economy around to create more jobs. I think that's strengthening our educational system. I think it's supporting innovation uh, and bringing down our national debt. Um, and if you look at where we're going right now, we're having a trouble with all of those things. And that's going to make for a poorer life uh, for the next generation. And that's just not good enough. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, so. People have to know you by now, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've got a lot of friends uh, across the area um, who come out to help us. Uh, we've been fighting for uh, expand, you know, protecting a woman's right to choose, for separation of church and state, and of course, we're making sure that Israel has a strong friend uh, here in America. We need to make sure that our relationship is vital uh, and as uh, relevant as it's always been. And I'm one of those that thinks that Israel's struggle is our struggle and Israel's success is our success. And look, we've got a lot of challenges right now. We need to make sure we stay engaged and keep the world moving in the direction that it should so that Israel is safe and, and, and peaceful. Very good. As a matter of fact, I did note in Jewish Chicago that uh, your stance on Israel truly was uh, excellent. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that. And look, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of pressure on Israel right now. Uh, with the recent events uh, that have happened in the Middle East. Um, you've got pressure from Hezbollah, and then of course you've got Iran, um, which is an existential threat that cannot be allowed to achieve nuclear weapons. So we've got a lot of work to do um, to move things forward, um, and so that people in Israel, as in every other country, um, can raise their children in peace and prosperity. Now, what do you see? How, do, you, do, you, do you favor a particular solution to the problem? Do you think there is a solution available for uh, what's going on there? Well, I, I mean, I think we have to be realistic about it. Uh, Hamas is, is, has no interest in peace. Um, they will not even acknowledge Israel's right to exist or give up uh, violence as a means to achieve their ends. So I don't know that it's realistic to think uh, that we can achieve a, a peace in the near term with any organization like that. Uh, the Fatah government has had a hard time actually delivering uh, on its promises, but I, I think that Mahmoud Abbas genuinely does want peace. So I think our best move at this point is to try and encourage uh, economic growth uh, under uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas and, and so that they can start to have uh, something to fight for and, and be less susceptible to extremism. But it's going to be a long time. I think we need baby steps to move forward, uh, to move towards a place where we can start to achieve peace. I think that's a realistic approach, to tell you the truth. Um, anyway, uh, now your campaign, you're, you're out in force. You, you know, you had a tough primary fight. You came out, you came out way ahead. Uh -huh. way, I mean, it was whatever. You did well, it was, you it, it, opposition. We had a great, great candidate uh, and that I was running against in the primary. Um, have a, a, a nice guy we're running against now, but there are very clear differences between us. Uh, and we want to make sure that uh, we get our ideas out and for those voters who want to see a, a pro-choice, uh, uh, social uh, moderate, as well as someone who understands the economy uh, and how to help move it forward, uh, I think I'll, I'll provide that in Washington, D.C. Well, it's a pleasure after all this time to finally meet you, Dan Seals. What is the website if people would like to contact your campaign and read up about you? The website is danseelsforcongress.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, and it's a pleasure meeting you. Likewise. Thank you for joining us at the 15th Greater Chicago Jewish Fest 30th anniversary. Uh, it's been really great, even with a little bit of rain involved. It was still a terrific fest, terrific attendance. We want to thank Jamie Hirsch together with Sonny um, for all the technical stuff today. It's been absolutely terrific. Um, there's going to be at least two, two or three shows coming out of this, so stick around in future weeks. You can not only catch this year's show, but past year's shows on YouTube. Um, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.